Hello and welcome to the Friday bonus edition of Cracking the Cryptic, which we've been which has been going for nearly a year actually now, um, where either Mark or I solve um, live today's Times Cryptic crossword, which is as usual for a Friday rated harder than the average. It's not it's not monstrous today apparently. It's got about 116 snitch rating. Um, and with 100 being a par value, so slightly harder than average, but hopefully not too monstrous. Yesterday's puzzle was absolutely splendid. As I was solving yesterday's, I wished I wished that had been the video because it was an incredible, incredible puzzle. So whichever setter of the times was responsible for yesterday's puzzle, fantastic work indeed. Um, now, as I look at the options here, a couple of things to mention. You can see their monthly club special, number two, well, 20,279. A quick reminder, if you like watching people solve impossibly hard or almost impossibly hard cryptic crosswords, do join us on Patreon where Mark always has a go at this month monthly club special without a dictionary. It's quite something to watch. Um, it's probably, no, I think it's, e it's even instructive if you're a newcomer to cryptic crosswords, but e even... Even if you're an expert solver, I think you'd enjoy enjoy watching the madness that goes on in that video. Um, and I want to shout out a couple of viewers, actually. I, I, I really appreciate it when people either like this crossword video or drop a nice comment in because it's trying to teach the algorithm that cryptic crosswords are a thing the algorithm should respect. Uh, and we had a lovely email from Seth who wrote to say that after a few weeks of watching these these Friday videos, he managed to solve 100% of a Guardian cryptic crossword, which I think is fantastic work. Well done, Seth. And also to Jamie, who's been uh, watching for a while now and can now, using the techniques learnt in these Friday videos, can now solve 80% of the uh, of the Times puzzles that he attempts. So Jamie, really well done. And um, yeah, I, I like getting emails like that. Anyway, that's that's enough. Let's have a look. Which puzzle is it? I'm launching Times Cryptic. Here we go. Boom. I hope I've got the window the right size. Let's get cracking. A thousand small homes over island capital. Well, I don't know what this is, but I think it's going to be a capital city. Um, a thousand. Thousand is one of those awkward words in a cryptic crossword because it can have a lot of small abbreviations, K, G, M, um, thousand small homes over island. Island can be I or island can be man as in the Isle of Man. I don't know what that is. Let's see if we can get a starting letter. Sun to pay for work, space for loads. Sun to pay for. To pay for can be to foot. Uh, workspace for loads. I haven't got a clue. <laughs> have a power to those. Sorry, have a have a have a debt to those in power. Well, that must be O. Okay, so I talk about this every week. There's there's if there is one of these in a cryptic crossword in the Times, and there almost is always one of these, there's only one, and it's a hidden clue. So, so the way to break this down is to cut it in, cut it. Um, uh, after the word to have a debt to. Can we think of a three letter word which means have a debt to? Yes. Let's use the word O. Um, how, how does it how does the word play work? Well, it's those in power. Um, and in the word power, you can see spelt out O-W-E. Um, now, this is not going to give us many useful letters. I mean, let's try nine across. Oppressive. Old emperor. Oh, onerous. It must be an old Nero. No longer working. It must be onerous. Old, old, old for O. Or O for old, Nero for the emperor, no longer working, US. I'm wondering if that's is trying to hint at if you're working, you're in use, and it's no longer. Maybe, I don't know, I'm almost tempted to wonder whether that's an old word for working, or whether it has a weird abbreviation, US, un, 
I don't know. I'm very sure that's onerous, though. Right, let's try and justify it. Four down. Peaceful havens. Nomad seeks regularly. Okay. I don't know what this is yet, but I think I'll be able to get it. Uh, I have got it now. So if we see words like regularly in a Times cryptic crossword, it almost always, and it, there are other examples of this, evenly, oddly, um, at regular intervals. What we're, what we're being asked to do is to take regularly occurring letters out of a string of letters. So look at nomad seeks here and just take the even, evenly occurring letters. So in positions two, four, six, and eight and 10, you can see we get O, A, S, E, S. So we took the regular letters out and we spelt the word oases, which are peaceful havens. So very common technique, well worth being aware of. 13 across we have at last got a starting letter cutting illumination on front of stage spotlight cutting illumination on front of stage um ah okay it's not spotlight it does use light in a different way so again, what we've got to do whenever we're, whenever we're faced with any cryptic crossword clue is we have to cut that clue in the correct place. So we can, we can study what the wordplay is separately from what we can study the definition is. Now here, that cut occurs after the word cutting, serendipitously enough. So we need a word that means cutting here. Now how does the wordplay work? We need to put a word for illumination on the f on so next to the front of the word stage well the front of the word stage is this s so we need an eight letter word for illumination and i'll give you a clue it ends in ing and if we put lighting which is certainly illumination at the end of s we get slighting and if you slight someone you cut them you know you cut them with your words um now, okay, should we try the G? Or maybe we'll try six across. Did I look at that? No. Very light, perhaps. The cost of traveling around Lima. Fair, okay. So, this must be, I just think this must be flair. So, very light, perhaps. Uh, is, is there a... Very, very, a very light is something, isn't it? I think it might even be a flare. So maybe, maybe very light is not saying it's very light outside. Maybe there is such a thing as a very light. I'm not sure, but I'm so confident about the wordplay here. The cost of traveling. Well, what do you pay if you get on a train? You pay the train fare, F-A-R-E. And that goes around Lima. Now, Lima is the international code word or radio code word for the letter L. So it feels to me like it must be flair. Um, in fact, let's check, shall we? Let's just have a look. Um, I'm not. I'm not going to change flair. So I, I'm very happy to. I, I just want to look up whether there is a uh, very light. I, there is a thing called a very light. A very light is a. F oh, it's just a flare. <laughs> okay. <laughs> a signalling or illuminating coloured flare fired from a pistol, which is called a very pistol after Edward Very from 1877, who echoes down the ages to a man in an attic solving a crossword. Um, six down, a uh, run round tree, creating quite an impression. Run round, if you run, you fly. So I think this is gonna be fly. Oh, I, no, I see what it is. So I need it. One, once you've had that thought, you've basically solved the clue because now you can see we're looking for a three letter tree ending in H. Well, there's only one, I think, that's going to work there. And that's Ash and Flashy. If you're flashy, you do leave quite, quite an impression. Right. Let's try seven down. A dot 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 do dot 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 me e la la one plays in this stuff. What? Why is this just absolute? nonsense it must it must be an anagram is it a, of a do me e how many letters is that six and then we need five no yeah we need five more la one yeah okay so it's an anagram of a do me e la one because those letters are playing 
and it's a style we're looking for. Uh, something mode? Oh, yes, it will be. It'll be that wind mode, Aeolian mode or something. I vaguely remember that from the little music theory I've studied. Um, now, how, how on earth do you spell that? It's something. It's I, I think it's like that, actually. I'm never quite sure of the start to Aeolian, but I think it's... I think it's this. Um, it's either this or the O and the E are the other way around. Um, so we can bear that in mind when we solve 10 across. 8 down. Kill off. Melon. Plant growing from within. Ooh. Hmm. I don't know what this is. Um, kill off could be to end, maybe. Melon. Oh. Ooh. Well, there is an OG. That's a type of melon, isn't there? I think it's a type of melon. So could there be a word, endogy? <laughs> could that be a plant that grows from within? I have no idea, but I quite like it. Um, let's pencil that in. I, I'm not going to look this up because I don't, I don't know whether this is a word or not, and I'm not prepared to sort of lock it in. So I, I will, if I if I decide that I'm not changing this answer, I will look it up. Oh, no, it's not going to be right. Oh, is it Ogen? Is it Og... Oh, maybe it's an Ogen me melon. An Endogen. Maybe that's better than an Endog. Because I, I'm just looking at soon here. I'm thinking that's Anon. Girl, Anne, must get, ra must get round in. Okay. And we've talked about this in a, in a video. I don't know. I can't remember if it's last week. But here, round is literally the letter O. And you might say, well, how, how does round? I mean, the letter O is round, but why, why does it define it, the letter O? And that is because if we go to the dictionary and we look under the letter O, it literally says, anything round or nearly so. Can you see it there? Anything round or nearly so. So I think I think that's where we get sort of round goes goes becomes O. That goes in an for girl, anon, then endogen. Now I'm getting closer to saying I'm locking this in, but I'm going to still check the D. Uh, worked on encasing. Worked on, what could that be? Uh, don't know. Encasing Egy Egyptian god. It's good to know some Egyptian gods. The most commonly useful one is Ra, uh, because it's so short. So that's probably there. <laughs> um, in precious, oh, maybe uh, diamond, actually. I'm now thinking, hang on, precious stone. That would not have an R there. Amon Ra, maybe Amon Ra. I thought Amon Ra was a double M O N. I think it is diamond, though. Um, because did, worked on, if you worked on something, you did it, didn't you? And then Amon Ra, or Amon Ra. I mean, I've certainly heard of Amon Ra, or Amon Ra, but I, I did think it was double M, but that's probably just my bad spelling as usual. Um, let's try five down. An endogen looks like it's locked in, doesn't it, if diamond is right. Five down. Insane to anger, number one. Close to Spanish or close to Spanish government. Whoa, insane. If you're insane, you are unhinged. You are to anger, madden. Number one. Uh, close to Spanish. Close to Spanish is probably H. Government. Um mad insane you mad aren't you would that work with this across well we don't know what this is to anger number one i don't know i'm not really seeing how that works at all um i'm just going to have a look at one across again a thousand small homes over island over island capital um, 
it's really annoying this sort of thing because if you if the if the name of the capital pops into your brain it's obviously such a massive advantage in solving the puzzle quickly let's try three down zany skier after one's gone okay here is a great example oh i don't know yet i haven't read the rest of the clue but if this isn't an anagram i'm going to be very surprised <laughs> um although <laughs> I thought, well, I have to say, I thought it was going to be an anagram of zany and then the word skier after the one, the I, had disappeared. But actually, I'm changing my mind. I think it might mean zany and it might be S-K-E-R. Visiting a veil is a ski resort. No, it's got to be a four-letter ski resort with an O in it. Uh, oh, I don't know. Um, oh, unless it's something like Cloisters. That's a ski resort, isn't it? I don't know. This is this is an, another. This is a very good example as well of where a little knowledge is sometimes a dangerous thing. I sort of do pride myself on knowing the names of some ski resorts. I'm a quite a keen skier, um, and I think I've got to get that out of my head. Skier after one's gone missing. Skier. See, that does imply, if I mean, if that's right, if that's visiting something, it implies we're looking at something like this, doesn't it? And zany. I don't know. Whoa, I'm not sure. Oh, I'm really disappointed in myself about that one. OK, 11 across. A smart cravat or tie primarily. Okay, so I made a big fuss at the start of the video about how important it was to cut the clue in the correct place so that you could detect which bit of the clue was the definition and which bit of the clue was the wordplay. Now there is one, ex well, there's, there's, there's probably two exemptions to that rule. And the most, um, most prized exemption, I suppose, is the so-called and lit clue, in which the whole clue acts as the definition and the whole clue acts as the wordplay and this is one of those clues luckily it's not too difficult because we have to just take if you take the primary letters of a smart cravat or tie you get ascot and now read the clue as a sentence a smart cravat or tie primarily well that describes exactly an ascot uh, which is a type of tie i think or cravat, presumably. I haven't actually checked that, but so so it the whole clue is wordplay, the whole clue is the definition. Oh no, and that's put pay to my I've I mean I have made such a such a butchery of this. Oh, actually. Oh, I had another idea which is wrong. I thought maybe res resort here could be saying resort. So maybe it was an anagram of visit ski without one in it, which would have been very clever. Um, but then then this would have had to mean zany skier. <laughs> and Simon doesn't fit. <laughs> so it's... Um, mm, no, there's no O in it, is there? The onerous, onerous must be right. Um, let's try one down. Sun, that's going to be S to pay for work space for loads storage pay for work stowage pay for work is a wage that's clever right so s is sun two is just literally the word two um sign of a very good cryptic crossword clue writer is where there's nothing superfluous in the clue and that too is very necessary sun um to pay for work is a wage and stowage is space for loads it's where you might have well, it's exactly what it sounds like right so this is a capital city beginning with s i think a thousand small homes 
over island <laughs> um capital oh come on simon what is it my brain is not telling me naughty brain right let's try 12 down ruin chinchilla perhaps when adjusting her atop ruin chinchilla perhaps what I mean, it feels like an anagram. Um, ruin. C catastrophize or something. I don't know. Let's try that one. 14 across. This looks like an anagram of burn et al. That's nine letters. And it's such a strange thing to put et al dot in a clue. Um, open to incomers. What on earth is that? In is that enterable? <laughs> <laughs> that's a weird word i think it's, it feels right it feels like it's got all the necessary components enterable that'd be open to newcomers so let's try 15 down ask for god's protection bless baptize i don't know for guarding weak and innocent blameless God, lame bless it is it is bless okay right so ask for god, god's protection is to bless that guards a word for weak which is lame and blameless are the innocent so that's that's got two starting letters let's try 19 butterfly in australia of no recognizable type hmm. anonymous don't think that's right um, Australia can just be A. I mean, it can be Oz as well, obviously. I don't know. An anonymous would give us an O here. We did think, oh, we thought this might be an H, didn't we? What was this one? In, oh, the, the government one. Par no. Um, I don't know. And that was the chinchilla. Ruin. Oh, catastrophe. I quite. Oh, it's snowing. It's snowing outside. That shows how lovely the the um. Uh, see um. S catastrophe does end in an anagram of an uh, an adjustment of her top, doesn't it? T R O P H E. So that's almost certainly. It almost certainly is catastrophe. The ruin of something is a catastrophe. So a chinchilla, perhaps, when, as. So a chinchilla is a cat. When is as. When are we doing something? We're doing it as we do something. You know, when and as, I think, are synonymous. And then an adjustment to her top gives us catastrophe. Uh, now, what's this one? This is... So my, what is going on here? Maybe it's skier rather than skier. A skier might be a lob. After, no, after one's gone, a skier. What's in the names of sk... I mean, it can't be like... <laughs> it'd be good if it was referencing Franz Klammer or something. Um, is it ski resort? Oh, it's cloister... It's, it's cloisters... Cloisters missing visits. I don't know. Stockholm would fit. Oh, Stockholm is going to be right for my capital, isn't it? Okay. How does this work? No idea at all. Um, I still have no idea. <laughs> I've written it in. Oh, I didn't think Gloucester's was spelt like this. Oh. For goodness sake, I've got no idea what, what's going on with three down. That's really disturbing. A thousand, that's going to be K. Okay, it could be M as well. Small. Small homes are cots. God, good grief. So cots, as in cottages, are small homes. So, well, how does the rest of it work? Is Holm an island? 
Oh, I think it might be one of those Scottish islands. Wow. I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but I think this the way that this breaks down is K is a thousand, as in you might see um, 10K. That would be, t uh, we're going to run a 10K. We're going to run a 10,000. I'm not suggesting we do that, especially not in the snow. But but that, that that's why K can be a 1,000. So, or an example of how K is a 1,000. Small homes are cots. That all is over, as in it's reversed. And then Holm, I think, is an island. I'm not certain about that, but so there are so many weird... Uh, you know, weirdly named Scottish islands that are you know, like Mull and things like that. Rockle. Rockle, which always makes me think of the David Mitchell. Um, the, the David Mitchell. Google Earth like soars his mind through s clouds where snowstorms brew. Newfoundland's dropped away and Massachusetts flew. No, and Newfoundland is ice entombed and Rockall Gulbashatton where no eye sees the lightning flash its momentary pattern. Ah, fantastic. Um, and a complete diversion. Um, what is going on here then? Ah, okay. So Zany Skier is an anagram of Skier without the eye for one. That would give us ERS at the end of this and into that we've got to put gone missing visits gone missing is lost Gah! okay I didn't know how to spell this um, I thought it was spelled with a C at the start and possibly with an I I thought it might be cloisters or something but clusters right clusters I think is where the royals go skiing um, and it's not somewhere I've ever been, but I do at least understand this answer now. So it's an anagram of skier without the eye, and then a, a synonym of gone missing, lost, visiting that anagram. So inside that anagram, that gives us, I think, the name of the ski resort. Now, what's this then? Insane to anger. Insane must be mad. Ma mad. Oh, come on, Simon. Mad. To anger is to, I was thinking of ire, but I don't think it is going to be that. Number one, close to Spanish. Number one, close to, I don't know. This letter might be very important, actually, in understanding what this clue is. Let's try 18 across. Endure explosion, not the first, in blitz. OK, um, so again, important to be able to cut this clue in the correct place in order to solve it. So here, how did I know where to cut it? I wasn't sure, but first in blitz is making me think of the first letter in the word blitz. Now, if that's right, it must be the other side of the clue that's giving the definition. So we can cut it after endure. There aren't going to be words for endure explosion. That just, you know, I don't know what a synonym for that could be. So we need a four letter word, which means endure. Now, you might immediately be able to think of a word that fits in here. And if you thought of the word last, well done, because that is the answer. An explosion is a blast and we take and not so it doesn't have its B, the first letter in blitz. And that's easier, isn't it? So 18 down. Sucker, I'm thinking leech. No. Sucker punch. Victim. Lamprey. <laughs> it's just lamprey. Okay. So how does this work? Um, well, victim is prey. To punch someone is to lamb them. And then lamprey is a sucker, a bloodsucker. So let's try 22 across. Slight inebriation. Nearly going wrong in confusion. Ooh. Slight merriness is what I want that to be. That's probably right, isn't it? The fact it fits. And that is definitely a definition of slight inebriation. Makes me think it's right. Nearly going wrong. Erring. So it's nearly, yes. Okay, so it's mess for confusion. And then if you're erring, E-R-R-I-N-G, you're 
going wrong. So we take nearly all of that word and put it in mess and we get merriness. Now, what's this going to be? I've not looked at the clue yet and I'm re something. Mm, don't know. Drive back, repel. No, concerned with vibration. Repulse. A pulse is a vibration, isn't it? So we're repulsing there. Now 21. Now let, no, we should do this. It must be yield, is it? Produce is yield. It's an anagram of Delhi. Okay. So how does this work? Unknown. Again, very important. If you see unknown in a cryptic crossword, it's almost always going to be the letter X, the letter Y, or the letter Z. And that is because they are mathematical unknowns. When we write equations, we would often write them, you know, X squared plus Y squared equals Z squared. Um, or if you're Fermat, you might have indulge in higher powers. So so what, what that means is, um, here we just have to think of the right uh, unknown x y or z to add to Delhi junk it anagram it and give a word that means produce so not too difficult if you know that trick 21 down taken off course I'm upended okay that sounds like I'm upending that doesn't it <laughs> by slide on ice okay so if you slide on out on ice you sled or sledge um, and taken off course you are misled so that that's okay so the the left side of this puzzle and the top right is not too bad but this bottom right area well i think there's a lot of clues i've not even looked at yet so active agent spy must be spy embracing bow act is sprightly yeah okay that's better solve um and again all i did there and this this i think is the biggest tip i can give anybody who is solving cryptic puzzles just build your in your mind build a bank of short synonyms because if you have those at your fingertips you it's such an advantage um so when i read this clue active agent doesn't really mean anything but the word agent i do know i do i know two short synonyms for agent one of them is spy as in a secret agent one of them is rep um as in an I don't know, an Avon lady might be described as a rep, um, an agent of a company. So rep and spy, but they're embracing something. So immediately spy is a much more natural thing to circle another word because you get the Y at the end. Both sides, well, both sides, are, I knew it was going to be something about rights and lefts, um, which almost means I've spelt the word in my mind once I'm thinking it's something right and left and it's in the word spy. Oh, it must be sprightly. That does mean active. 23 down. Drain small jug. Can I think of any short synonyms for the word jug? Yes, I can think of two. Jug can mean a prison. So I can think of words like stir. But jug can also be a ewer. And small can be S. You might see that on a T-shirt. And a sewer or a sewer is a drain. Um, and therefore, we've got that one now. OK, punish favourite dog. Do I know any short synonyms? Well, especially the word favourite. That comes up in crosswords a lot. Pet is a short synonym. So if I tell you that the word pet might be involved in this, it's easy to solve the clue now. It must be whip it. And if you punish something, you whip it. If you, a favourite is a pet and a dog is a whip it. Now, what's this one? An irrational. <laughs> this is great, actually, because there's a lot of um, crossword ease coming in here. An irrational. If you've never seen this before, you'll just think this is nonsense. But it's, it's, it comes up enough that it's, it's absolutely standard. Pi is an irrational number. You know, it, it, it can't be expressed as a fraction. 22 over 7 is not quite good enough. So, PI is literally an irrational. It is the number pi. Terror's beginning. Well, that's the beginning of the word terror. And a bed is a pit. Um, and there we go. We've sold that one straight away. Now, we can see this is going to end in ing, ing I presume. Uh, facing work, sitting for artist yeah okay so if you're sitting for an artist what are you doing you're posing 
And here is an important abbreviation for work. Op, as in opus, musical work, comes up a lot. So op and posing, opposing. If you're facing something, you're opposing it. 24. Piece of Amilcare Poncielli's making a comeback. Well, that's very interesting in the context of that clue. Wow. OK, so I said and made a big fuss of the fact there was only ever one of these in a Times crossword, a hidden answer. And I thought that was true. I thought that was a rule. Maybe this is claiming it's not hidden. It's simply saying the letters inside the word power. So it's not really a hidden in the sense that this one is. So, I mean, this is one of those clues that you, I don't know who Amilcare Poncielli is. So ordinarily you'd be like, oh my goodness, I can't possibly solve this. However, it's such a weird collection of letters that immediately my brain is thinking, well, it might be a hidden. And a, and a piece of the string of letters, Amilcare Poncielli, making a comeback. So reversed inside that string of letters, you can see spelt out O-P-E-R-A, opera. Which means I presume that this person is either a singer or a, a con, um, composer. I suppose it could be a conductor as well. Um, I'm sorry, I don't know, but but it, it's definitely a hidden reversal. So let's try this one. Reticent. OK, again, I haven't looked at the rest of the clue, but if you're reticent, do I know a short synonym for reticent? I, well, I suppose I know two, coy and shy, more likely shy. And that goes about skin. OK, skin growth, four letters, which probably ends in a T. Well, it's wart, so we can put swarthy in. And I haven't even looked at the rest of the clue. Looking dark is if you have swarthy looks, you look dark, don't you? So that is great. Now we've got just two left, but we have looked at these before. Butterfly in Australia. Oops. OK, that's a bit terrifying, isn't it? I don't know this. Of no recognisable type. Wow. Oh, dear, dear, dear. That's terrifying. This is a terrifying crossing, actually, because I had no idea what this one was. That must be mad, mustn't it? To anger, rile. Yeah, if you anger someone, you rile them. OK, so what's that giving? Madril. Mad, mad, oh, well, Madrid is the capital of Spain. So maybe this is some word to do with that. Ryle, number one. Mid I don't know. I'm not sure about this. I'm trying to work out what the ending. I think this is probably right. Madrid. It couldn't be a D here, could it? To anger isn't to rid or to ride, really. So if if Madrill, then I need number one close to Spanish or close to. I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure. Close to Spanish makes me think this is a, this would be an H if that's right. But that I want this. I mean, in terms of how I think, what I think is more likely is it's Madrillian or something like that. And and the definition is close to the Spanish government. I this, so this is a word for somebody from city of Madrid. Madrid. Insane to anger. 
Madrid. I don't know. And that would give an N here. Oh, Annapolis. No, <laughs> that doesn't even go in. That O is clearly wrong. Um, okay, so what is this in Australia? In Australia, is that going to be A then? Of no recognisable type. I want this to be some. I want this to be something more like anonymous. Wow, I don't know. I don't like that N. I'm not sure. I'm not sure I like this L. But I do think this is something to do with Madrid. What's this word? Okay. Butterfly in Australia. So I, do I? I don't know. I still, I'm still not quite sure. Oh, what about a word like amorphous? Amorphous. Oh, I quite like that. Morphous. I think I've heard that word in the context. Of a butterfly. Or maybe no, maybe it's morpho. Yeah, okay, so how about this? If a morpho is a butterfly, then Australia might not be A, it might be A-U-S. And amorphous, if something's amorphous, it is. Of no recognisable type. How confident do I feel about that? Fairly. So what is this then? Madrilino? Madrilino. Oh, number. Yeah. Ah, that's it. Madrilino is going to be the answer. Okay, so it's insane, mad. To Anger is to rile. And then number is N-O, as in number one. You might put N-O dot. And then the, the I've, I've, I keep talking about what you need to cut the clue in the correct place. Well, I didn't do that very well. I was thinking number one and close to Spanish. But if I had cut it after the word number, then I would have realised the definition was one close to Spanish government. Somebody who lives in Madrid must be called a Madrilino. I think. So I think I would submit this. Um, let's do that. Now I meant to submit without the leaderboard so that I don't uh, I don't pollute the, the snitch statistics. Correct. That's great. Okay, so now we can go back to the dictionary and start to check some of these words that we didn't know. So andogen is a plant including the mono the, mo, the monocotyledons Tylodons or something regarded as growing from within. Yeah, okay, I have never heard of that before. Let's have a look at Aeolian mode. In ancient Greek music, the same as the Hyperdorian or Hyperphrygian in old church music. Yeah, that I know from nothing. Um, okay, which other ones were? Oh, well, we should look up. Is Madrilino going to be in the dictionary? Madrid. Madrilino. Yes, it is. A native or citizen of Madrid. Lovely. Um, oh, I'm going to check. I was thinking of OG, wasn't it? I knew OG was a word. It's a cur... It's a... It's... Okay, it's a moulding. Ogun is the melon. Okay, so I, I sort of... I got there in an unimpressive way. Oh, U, U, US. Let's just check US because I didn't understand that really. U.S. Okay, not that form. As above, from Ut Supra. So where was this one? No longer working. Old Emperor. That must be Old Nero. No longer working. I don't quite understand that, actually, why US is no longer working. I mean, I can see 
If something's in use, it's working. But no longer doesn't really mean to me cut the last letter off. So I'm, I'm unsure. I think I've misunderstood that. I think I'm being a bit slow. Um, let's just check. Oh, morpho. Yes, yes. I want to definitely check that. Morpho. There it is. A butterfly of a tropical American genus of gigantic size and brilliant colouring, often bright blue. A name of Aphrodite that's from. I didn't know that. Gosh. Oh, for a classical education. Um, merriness, we understood, didn't we? Repulse whip it. Is that the last few cross answers were quite a lot easier. Uh, catastrophe clusters won't be in the dictionary. Um, flashy, we were okay with, weren't we? Yeah, so the rest of it was okay. So there were a couple of very difficult crossings. I think this crossing, 19 across and 5 down, is vicious. It's vicious, and that's probably accounting for the high snitch rating today. Oh, no, let's actually just check the wordplay of Stockholm. That was difficult, wasn't it? Because cots for cottages. Let's see that. Uh, not under cot one. There we go. Cot, small, cot two. A small dwelling or a cottage. And Holm won't be in the dictionary, I don't think. Oh, oh well, it is. Oh, gosh. There it is. It is. Holm is a word for an islet in a river. Oh, goodness, so it's not. I was totally wrong. I thought it was going to be one of the Scottish islands. Um, but it is literally an island in a river, is a holm. Well, I didn't know that. Good. Oh, Arm and Ra, I was going to check as well, wasn't I? Because for me, I thought that had double M in it. Clearly it doesn't, but... Oh, it does! The ancient ramhead god, Egyptian... Oh, I don't know. Uh, maybe if I put Ra in, it will explain what's going on now. <laughs> Let's try Re. See if there's a bigger explanation of what's going on. Re, there it is. An ancient, the ancient Egyptian sun god. I'm surprised. Amen. It's not there, is it? I don't, I'm not seeing it. Oh, so I'm a bit confused about that one as well. But anyway, we did get there. We solved it by hook or by crook. We 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 we, we knew enough short synonyms to see us through. Um, and thank you very much for watching. If you do enjoy these, please please drop a like onto the video, or subscribe or something. <laughs> a quest to teach Google the value of these things, and. Um, We'll be back later with more more Sudoku probably edition of Cracking the Cryptic.